How do we do this? User research. Lots of different users. We need to understand who they are, what are their issues, and how does that all come together and relate to our product. One list of different ways of getting your user research. On the left hand side you have things which are sort of out there. You probably need to have a call center, you have it already. You have customer support emails and forums and analyses, analytics which you should probably be running on your websites and your product logs, and reviews. Those are things out there in the world that need to exist for most products. If you can use that for your advantage. On, the, on this side, we have the things that we can actually go out and we need to do in order to really get to know our users. We have your field studies and your interviews and surveys and we can get users to do diary studies and we can send them texts and say, what are you doing right now? And amazing things happen. There was a website about a guy doing research into happiness and he's got an app and he's getting hundreds of thousands of people giving him information uh, every day, every you know, number of times a day about what they're feeling and happiness. Lots of different ways to get your data. Uh, focus groups is something that marketing knows about. They understand that, they believe in that, and yet the limitations of focus groups are so extreme in that you get a room of people sitting and talking about what they want versus what they actually are doing, what they actually would do, and the difference is, is astronomical. And more and more, but the budgets are there, right? They have these huge budgets for focus groups, missing a whole lot of other opportunities. And these are the things we'll, we'll get to talk to a little bit more. The other thing that's really great to do when you're doing research is not just one method, but actually triangulating, do, doing different methods, trying to find out the same questions in a different way, and then bringing the information together. For example, if you wanted to find out, okay, your research questions, what is the weather? Different ways you could try to answer the question, right? All of those, those qualify. And then, if you're going along that path, what would you potentially create as a product if you're looking for weather related? You could get this, right? And then you can get this. Quite a different approach, right? This site, you go in there, you say Toronto, and it says yes. <laughs> How's that for information overload or, you know, fitting into our, our keyhole of user? What do you really want? To, you just want to know this. The rest isn't, you, really doesn't matter that much. I think there's also a sweater website. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, sweater, yes. Um, we live in interesting times. So field studies is another really amazing thing that gives us data and information about users that we could not get any, any other way. For example, you go to somebody's house and you see this. You know, how would you interpret this? And then what would, what would your potential solution for this be? Boxes. Bigger boxes, you know, more boxes? Or what is it, right? Or is it upgradable devices? Or is it, you know, the potential depends on where you're coming from. What are you looking to find out? This could mean a lot of different things. And unless you see this, you may not actually have some of those ideas come to mind. Um, you can go into field studies and ask people questions like, would you use drop down menus rather than using check boxes? Do you think he can answer that sitting on his couch reading his paper? How, how uh, would you believe that answer, right? Take that to the bank? Probably not. But hey, if you want to find out about knitting and you know organizing spaces, going to a field is a really useful way to do that. Then you get a lot of interesting ideas. Here's an interesting example of a uh, study that uh, Nokia did, and they followed people and figured out where they were using their phones and how, and they had them video cameras. This lady's got a battery pack. She's got a video camera. Every time she uses her phone, it gets recorded and. I mean, there's extremes about you know what you can do about the amount of interference you can provide, you could have with users, but you get really rich, valuable data from this kind of very expensive, very in-depth study. Take it to the bank. Hey, Wells Fargo. They went out. They did some research about mobile use because they were trying to figure out what kind of functionality to put into their mobile apps. And their assumption was, oh, people would use uh, phones only for emergencies or while traveling. Wow, that was. The study was published in 11, but I think they must have done it a lot earlier because the things have changed since, right? They found out that, hey, people are not just using things in the emergency or traveling. They're using them lots of different places and all the time. And even when there's a computer 
because they're actually doing a lot of really interesting things in interesting places, right? Um, so, um, so an example here, what would you do, a questionnaire interview or observation for finding out how far people drive to, com to com commuter station? What's the best research method? Observation. Observation, while you're standing at the commuter station and? You can ask people, they tell you one thing, they have all the best intentions to give you the truth, and they don't necessarily have the right estimate. And so that's why doing multiple things, so like yes, maybe watching them, maybe having them measure it, maybe actually giving them a survey before and after, you know, checking odometer readings and so on, right? Those kinds of things would get you more accurate information if that's what you're looking for. What steps do you go through to plan a, to plan a route? How would you find out? What's the best research method? Interview. Interview. So you're gonna, s okay, so let's have an interview. You're sure. asking me. So uh, when you get ready in the morning, what are your steps? I have breakfast. Is that the first thing you do? I get dressed. You do anything before you get dressed? I check my email, <laughs> right? Okay, so, is that, but is that gonna tell you how I plan my route? Maybe a questionnaire would be better. What are you asking? It's like the same thing as an interview. So a questionnaire, I don't know, uh, from the, the time you leave your house to the time that you get to work, uh, how many corners do you turn? Do you know the answer to that? No. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I do. I do. Okay. I can tell you. Okay. Okay. The rest of us probably don't. I would choose observation if they allowed you to observe them at that time. Okay, or you can actually say, okay, you want to go to the zoo. Right? How would you plan to get to the zoo? Google Maps. Observation doesn't provide life naturally inside. So it's observation, is it naturalistic, or we, cre we can create a situation where we actually get them to do something for us, right? So there's that balance between you know advantages and disadvantages of the various methods. Touch screen or monitor. You know voice commands. How would you find out what the preferences are there? Possibly observation because what you actually do. Where would you observe that? Do you have the luxury of like measuring it on whatever you're testing? Then I would enable both and see what gets used. Okay. How about uh, Siri logs? Your iPhone logs, you know, are you talking to her or are you, are you co doing commands, right? Wouldn't that give you like a more accurate result if you could get some people to let you follow that? Because a lot of these abstract kind of creating situations, you know, you're, yes, sometimes you have no choice because the technology doesn't exist and you want to plan for something. Yeah, then you have to do that. But if you have something that exists and you can actually get the real pulse, that would be more powerful, right? Because your data would be better. So then you, you understand your users, you understand the range of users and their age groups and how, and like understanding all this information is useful.